Hello everyone. So in this particular presentation, we'll uh, discuss about the properties of impulse response for LTA system. So as comparing to the previous class, we also done the properties of uh, impulse response initially with respect to the commutative system, associative system and distributive system. And now we will continue that is the fourth one is memoryless system is another kind of properties for impulse response for a given LTA linear time invariant system. So as we know the system is said to be a memoryless we should have for any output at any time depends on the present value of input. Nothing but if a system I said uh, as a memoryless whenever the output at any instant of time it depends on the present value of the input this is what the condition if the output does not depend the value with respect to the input values with respect to past and previous value then system is having some memory so this is what the general statement for memoryless condition but over here the impulse response I need to consider for the discrete time LTA system this is true only if h of n is equal to 0 as you can see h of n equal to 0 for n is not equal to 0 and also the continuous time LTA system if I say h of t is equal to 0 for t is not equal to 0 there are two cases the impulse response I considered in con discrete nature as h of n and in continuous nature I considered as h of t. So impulse response in the sense we defined in terms of convolution integral or convolution uh, sum we said h of n or h of t. So that is majorly dependent on the impulse functions. So this impulse function usually we defined with respect to n equal to 0. So if suppose n equal to 0, the value should be existed for any impulse. But if n is not equal to 0, the value should not exist. Nothing but the instead of the present value, there should be a value should not be exist for any impulse functions or impulse response. So that is what the condition we taken for here also the impulse response system always looks majorly with the memoryless condition when h of n is equal to 0 for n is not equal to 0 under discrete nature under continuous nature h of t is equal to 0 for t is not equal to 0. So well, moving on to the next particular property is causal system to understand it for the impulse response function. So first of all I will just need to go back the causal system what you mean by causal system. If any output it depends on with respect to the input values it depends on the present and past values of the input of the system then system is called as a causal system. If the value of output always depends upon the future values of input then system is non-causal. So with all these knowing the causal conditions for any system will take it into the impulse response uh, let me consider the impulse response under discrete time LTA system is said to be causal only h of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 and for continuous nature of LTA system is said to be a causal its h of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0. So here what we are considering the value t less than 0 in the sense or n less than 0 the in the sense the value we are taking the previous value here. The present or past value the previous value what we considered here h of n is going to be 0. There might be a something of future values k 
can be existed with respect to any system so impulse response is said to become a causal system under h of n is equal to 0 when n less than 0 for a discrete nature for continuous nature h of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 so this is how we can define the causal system for impulse response so moving on to the next property is the stable system stable system so if i coming into the stable system or a system is said to be a stable uh, if every bounded input should produce this bounded output this is what definition for the stability of any particular system so let me consider this stability condition over to the impulse response let me consider the discrete time LTI system with an input x of n which is bounded I'll take the given input x of n is bounded so I will consider that x of n now bounded so I'll take that bounded condition x of n is having some value that is b of x which is less than infinity that is for all any kind of n value which we considered which is something finite value or the bounded value if the impulse response of a system is h of n let me consider one impulse response h of n along with the x of n then the magnitude of the output is given by the convolution sum between input x of n and h of n so y of n is nothing but it is x of n convoluted with h of n or h of n convoluted with x of n because it follows a commutative law hence these two are equal so either h of n convolution with respect to x of n is correct or equal to it is x of n convoluted with h of n so i'll take stick with the second condition h of n convoluted with x of n to produce output y of n so if i substitute the convolution sum equation for this particular equation the h of n convolution with x uh, with x of n so then i can take the equation i'll just consider it over to the magnitude for both input and output conditions so under magnitude summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k into x of n minus k this equation i taken from the convolution sum between h of n and x of n so we know this equation that's why i just uh, taken the convolution sum equation so as per know the condition the magnitudes the magnitudes what I considered of the sum of uh, a set of numbers is smaller than or equal to the sum of magnitude of the numbers what we get so the normally the magnitude whatever I considered so that is always going to be smaller than or equal to the magnitude of any numbers what we are getting so this equation again I rewrite as like this you can see y of n should be less than or equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity under the magnitude h of k into x of n minus k i can separate the magnitude and i can rewrite the expression as like this so let me consider it as uh, i mentioned earlier the stable system x of n is a stable with the stability factor some uh, bounded input value as uh, b of x so i just equated uh, x of k term or x of n term which is approximately less than or equal to b of x so that is nothing but even x of n minus k should also be less than or equal to b of x so this can be defined for all n or k values with respect to x of n or x of n minus k so therefore i can say x of n minus k which is equivalent to b of x let me consider then the equation y of n simplified as less than or equal to b of x with the summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity with the magnitude h of k for all value of n what we can define it this particular condition so this output y of n should be bounded if i want to say the system is stable i should also say the output y of n also be stable comparing to the input x of n so to say that i should have this summation with respect to impulse response should also be a finite value that's why to say output y of n is bounded only possible the summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity under the magnitude h of k should be less than infinity so that 
therefore i can say under discrete time lta system is stable only if its impulse response is absolutely summable then only i can say the given condition or the given impulse responses will be under fall under stability condition so this is again i can prove it for the continuous lti system in the similar manner instead of h of k or h instead of x of n i just need to be used x of t so y of n i have to use y of t that is what the condition and convolution integral equation have to be considered and this bounded output condition always dependent on the integration minus 2 to plus uh, sorry minus infinity to plus infinity with respect to h of to should be d to should be less than infinity so integral sum absolutely summable just but uh, with respect to the continuous nature it is should be uh, absolutely integrable so that is what the condition under uh, the continuous uh, time lta system the stability factor for any impulse response so the next uh, property is invertibility that is uh, again the inverse factor with respect to the impulse response what we are looking for so we know that system is invertible only if uh, the input can be recovered from the its output by connecting uh, it uh, with the system called inverse system so when i have the from the input i uh, if i able to produce output so i can trace back the input uh, from the output side so this is what the regular meaning what we considered the invertibility factor with respect to any system so even we can define it with respect to impulse response now so for impulse response let me consider in the continuous time uh, nature continuous time lta system with h of t which is also having inverse system i can say h i of t so h inverse of uh, the continuous time signal so how we can see that is uh, with this particular uh, diagram i can understand the invertible system so input x of t which is uh, convoluted with respect to h of t to produce output y of t for the output y of t if i do the inverse h of t uh, if i do so i can get it back x of t which is equivalent to some output z of t some other output but uh, this is i can this is how i can trace back x of t so this entire invertible system whatever taken in the block diagram we can now represent it in terms of equation as you can see here z of t which is equivalent to 2 x of t which is convoluted with respect to these two terms that is h of t convoluted with h i of t will give back x of t so here h of t and h i of t which is uh, in convoluted so this will always going to be give some impulse function delta t so this is what i just defined with respect to continuous nature but if i say it for the discrete time lta system the invertibility factor h of n convoluted with h i of n which is equal to delta n so this is how we can able to looking for the invertibility properties for impulse response function so let us uh, understand some of the problems with respect to any given impulse uh, response or impulse uh, functions with respect to that we will looking forward into the problems so problem statement uh, which is uh, given here the following are the impulse responses of lti system and uh, i just have to determine each system for any given each system whether it is memoryless whether it is causal whether it is stable i just have to observe it and i have to justify this particular answer so first we will look for one particular uh, the impulse response lti system this is given in h of t which is equal to e to the power t into u of minus 1 minus t so first question now h of t is given that is impulse response given in the continuous time system and this continuous time impulse response system for this i just have to look forward whether it is memoryless whether it is causal whether it is stable i have to look forward it so to the b find these conditions with respect to given x of h of t so i just need to go for the solution so first what we did is here we plotted the given h of t 
So given h of t is consisting e to the power t along with u of minus 1 minus t. So as you can see, this is unit step function in terms of continuous nature. So u of t which is defined with respect to the graph in the right hand side, that is u of t, but we have u of uh, minus 1 minus t. So there is time shift and reflection existed with respect to u of t. So the time shift factor is t minus 1. So minus 1 shift. So nothing but right shift uh, with one value. Next reflection of that it is reflected like this. So but this need to be multiplied with e to the power t. So e to the power t is like this in terms of time system it is on to the other side. So e to the power minus t usually it is going to be produced. So the graph is look like the exponentially increasing in the left hand side of the x and y axis. So this is how the, the plotting is done for given any h of t. So now I just uh, trying to understand the first statement that is memoryless with respect to given h of t. So as per the observation from the graph, what I can observe the given h of t is not equal to 0 when t is not equal to 0. So normally we uh, as per the previous uh, definition for memoryless we said h of t is equal to 0 for t is not equal to 0. So but here it is not following that condition when t is not equal to 0 the remaining portions where h of t is not equal to 0 because h of t is having a value when t is less than 0 that is what we are observing hence h of t is not equal to 0 t less than t not equal to 0 so therefore system will have some memory uh, rather than in terms of h of t so the same condition if i take it for the causal causality function uh, causality verification so we know that uh, previous condition as per the definition h of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 here t is less than 0 if I take h of t is not equal to 0 hence uh, the system is non-causal so now looking forward into the stability condition I said as per the previous uh, presentation previous uh, slide uh, we said the stability for continuous time we should have integration minus infinity to infinity h of tau d tau need to be considered here given h of tau is in terms of e to the power tau u, u of minus 1 minus tau but this u of t is defined from minus infinity to minus 1 therefore integration limit now minus infinity to minus 1 e to the power tau with d tau this is equal to 1 in this particular interval so if I take the integration I will get e to the power tau if I apply the limit from minus infinity to minus 1 so what is remaining is e to the power minus 1 that is less than infinity hence bounded input to produce bounded output condition hence the system is stable this is how I just can be verify all this memoryless causal or stability condition with respect to given any particular impulse response function LTA systems so word with the another set of uh, the function that is h of t is given again in continuous nature so h of t is equal to 2 into e to the power minus t plus e to the power t minus 100 divided by 100 uh, whole this particular multiplied with u of t so for this i just again uh, i am not going to plot the graph for this particular condition I'll just try to solve directly as per the statement of memoryless causal or stable I'll take and I'll try to solve so as per the observation the t is not equal to 0 in that particular condition h of t is not equal to 0 because h of t will have a value when t is greater than 0 0 so u of t is there means u of t is defined from 0 to infinity value so 0 to infinity we are going to have a value for h of t when t is from 0 to infinity so when t is not equal to 0 h of t is not going to be equal to 0 hence system is having some memory so the same condition if i look forwarded to the 
causality so h of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 because t is less than 0 if i suppose i considered u of t value becomes 0 so what is that when t is less than 0 this entire term this into 0 will be 0 so h of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 therefore system is causal that is proved so the stability condition to be proved so i just need to be taken the integration factor from minus infinity to infinity h of tau d tau this condition have to be holds good and i have to make this value should be a finite if this is finite then i can say system is stable so i substitute h of t value over here with respect to h of tau so 2 into e to the power minus instead of t i'll use tau uh, minus tau e to the power tau minus 100 divided by 100 this entire term with respect to u of t hence uh, u of t equal to 1 when the limits from 0 to infinity considered so I'll split this term with respect to the integration 2 integ 2 oh, into e to the power minus uh, 2 along with the integration uh, 2 is constant I can take out 2 into integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus 2 d tau this is one term and the second term integration 0 to infinity with respect to this is e to the power 2 minus 100 by 100 d tau so first term if I integrate it if I substitute the values uh, I'll get some finite value but for the second term if I integrate it and if I substitute the value it will give infinite term so infinite and finite if I add it together I'll get infinite value therefore the given any system with respect to the continuous time of h of t impulse here is not producing a bounded output it is infinite hence system is unstable this is how i can prove again the three different conditions like memoryless causality or stability with respect to any given impulse response so i'll look forward with one more problem that is uh, now given is system is a impulse response in discrete nature as you can see h of n so this is in discrete nature so h of n is equal to n into half to the power n into to u of n so this is what i just need to be considered discrete nature for that i just have to look forward whether it is memory whether it is causal whether it is stable i just need to be look forward again i will not draw the plot i will not plot the plot here graph here so directly i'll just uh, use the condition and i'll try to solve so given h of n consisting u of n nothing but u of n having a value from n equal to 0 to infinity so when n is not equal to 0 nothing but h of n will have value so h of n is not equal to 0 it is having some value therefore system is having some memory here so u of n is given so when, suppose i take n is less than 0 so what is going to happen n is less than 0 u of n is 0 therefore h of n is equal to 0 hence the system is causal so the third condition stability factor i just uh, need to go forward the stability condition so for impulse uh, function h of k should be bounded if it is bounded then i can say system is stable so i'll take the impulse function uh, as a summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k i'll substitute i'll try to simplify this if i able to get finite then system i can say it as a stable so i'll substitute for h of n value so h of n value is defined n into half to the power n with u of n so u of n having value is only defined from 0 to infinity as per the integration sorry summation limit it is minus infinity to infinity i can only use it 0 to infinity to say u of n is equal to 1 so if u of n is equal to or one then i can take it only with respect to these values the remaining values but uh, instead of n i am using k so wherever i have n i just need to be taken as k so k into half to the power k is remaining with respect to summation k equal to 0 to infinity so if i use this particular equation this is looks similar to the standard form as summation n equal to 0 to infinity and it says n into alpha to the power 
n which is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha whole square where alpha should be less than 1 here alpha is less than 1 as per the given equation hence it follows this particular condition or standard form from this I can write the equation as alpha here it is half half divided by 1 minus half whole square after simplifying I will get this value as 2 so this is less than infinity nothing but it is bounded output therefore I can say the system is stable so this is how we can verify all the different conditions uh, or different properties with respect to the impulse response thank you